Titus, when did this happen? Oh. Hi, guys. It is Free Motion Quilting Friday. Uh, welcome to Friday. Um, we've got we've got a guest for you today, and we also have some fun new bells and whistles. Um, and then as far as free motion quilting goes, um, depending on what you have with your machine, you might not have a free motion quilting foot. So on Brother, you're looking at uh, adding this one to the mix unless you have um, one of the high shank feet, and then this foot doesn't fit those high shank ones. Unless you have the right adapter. Um, from the Bernina side, there's a whole bunch of feet you can use for free motion quilting. Um, I'm not going to list them right now, but 24 is one of them. Nine, I like number nine. The stitch regulator. Um, other things that are going to make your life way easier with free motion quilting. Um, gloves to hang on to your quilt. Uh, so we carry machiners and grab a ruse. And these you want to find the ones that are the right size. Machiners you're going to put your hand in on the back of the package and say, oh, I need a medium because my finger goes up to that, that high. Um, other stuff that we have, uh, Handy Quilter has these fun little things called sweet spots and paddles. Do we have paddles? I didn't bring, I think we sold the paddles and they're pretty big for a domestic machine. Yeah. But everybody I have shown sweet spots to has bought a set. And then good old fashioned uh, pounce and stencils. If you're not feeling up to figuring out how to navigate this design yourself repeatedly, um, pounce is just chalk dust really that you will brush through your stencil onto your quilt. And then you can get that same shape and then you just get to trace. It's like, it's like coloring as a kid. Uh, the Gypsy Quilter Fabric Guide, this is like a kind of a ring that'll sit around your um, needle. So similar to what Barb's going to show you with the sweet spots, but just another way of holding your fabric so your hands aren't doing the death grip trying to... This death grip when you're quilting your quilts is really, really hard on your arms and your neck. Um, so the other thing we've grabbed is uh, different battings. Um, we carry a ton of different types of batting. Um, so this is a poly bat and some of it's packaged and so you can buy the size you need, but you usually need your batting to be a little bit bigger than your quilt top. And depending on how you're quilting it, how much that difference needs to be, whether you're doing it on your domestic or having a long armor do it. Hi, Barb. Hi. What so we're we gonna quilt, or gonna start quilting, because we won't finish it today, uh, that lovely Tree of Wisdom panel. And on a teeny tiny little Bernini. Just a little, just a little guy. Uh. So what I've got is backing. It's a little generous for sit down, but I sized it in case we wanted to do long arm. Oh, I did, that's probably. So, What are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? Well, I've got, it was, fusible poly for batting. Nice. I like to use, for wall hangings, I like to use a poly bat because it Something lays nice and flat, a little more hangs firm. on the wall. If you still want more loft than that, you can throw a layer of hobs or wool on top of the poly. Something puffy. That'll make it puffy, but then you don't get to put as much pretty thread on because it just squashes it down. So, as usual, first thing we want to do, make machine make funny noises and grab that bobbin thread. Now because this is a store sample, we just left the white bobbin in here. So now, this is our standard number nine Bernina free motion foot, or sometimes called the darning foot. And panels or printed fabric is the best way to start free motion quilting if you've never done it before because it's just like following the lines and you don't even have to be perfect. Of course, in free motion, you control the speed and you control the stitch length, which is always a good idea to choose your threads carefully. So what I wanna do is just kinda go around some of these nice pebble shapes first to make them pop out. So now Leah was t showing you how the, the death grip on the fabric. I'm going to go to these guys. So automatically your hands are in a better position.
using the um, fusible batting. Mm -hmm. I could have added some pins to help secure the top to the batting layer. Um, but what I like to do sometimes, we've got some pretty good static and friction going on here, is <laughs> I just lay it out on the ironing board and I iron the layers. And it seems to be enough on something this size that you don't have to worry about fighting with pins. problems happen. What has happened here is we've got a thread jam underneath. Yeah, just a little bit of a thread jam and that happens sometimes when you're free motioning. So you can see there was a little double back on here. Doesn't matter. People get really hung up about the strangest things when they're free motion quilting and you need to understand especially free motion quilting is rather artful and it wouldn't be precision perfect. With something like this, it's not pin basted or anything. I thought these pebbles are great to show and they do travel up the center of the panel. You can see how they kind of progress right up the center. So that's a good place to start in a panel like this because that's going to anchor your center. So if you yeah. get any puckering, then you can kind of smooth away from it. Yeah, this one just happens to have a really nice flow to it if you mm -hmm. want a free motion. And, it, and it get, there's a lot of places to get some art going on in there. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's lots of areas like I would probably, once I get this done, I might change thread colors and start working into some of these leaves here and here. Like I say, you can do very simple f quilting on this, or you can take this and, and jazz it right up with a lot of thread painting. <laughs> and, and the thing is, if you, it shouldn't be fast. This is the sort of thing you want to put some good music on and you just want to kind of relax into it. Now I'm going to actually spin this. I put the needle down, but it's starting to get, I'm kind of halfway up the panel almost. I'm starting to get a little bunchy, so I'm going to rotate it, give myself a little bit of space. telling one of her classes that if you're going to be sitting at your sewing machine like this for a long time, train yourself to sew with the other foot. Yep. Because, and I know this. Hey, those are nice shoes, Barb. Thank you. <laughs> we have to kind of coordinate. I'll show you a tip about those later, too. Um, so I am trying to train myself, and this is a good thing to practice with, to sew with my other foot. This, strangely enough, evens the stress on your back. Um, so someone wants to know how you would tie off. Um, well, that was, it's a personal choice. Um, you can, some people would uh, pull off two big long tails, put thread a needle and feed them through. Um, some people will just sew really tiny, tiny stitches for a half inch or so and then trip, trip.
trim both tails tight. And I what think do you it, like, Barb? Well, I think it depends on what you're planning on using the item for. If this is going to be a wall hanging and it's not going to get a lot of rummaging around, I might be inclined just to tack it really closely and then trim or even use the th if your machine has a thread cutter and then you can go to the back and snip those little tufts that it sometimes uses. Working on the long arm, it's always bring your bobbin thread to the top, tack, and then you can cut really close, yeah. especially for a wall hanging like this. But there's nothing wrong with burying those threads either. So again, the usage and what type of batting you have, how is it going to hold that thread? So here's an area that didn't have a pebble in it, but it kind of looked oh my God, like Barb. it needed a pebble. Are you breaking out? I'm breaking out. What the heck? It's just too much fun. But I can see what's going to happen now because I'm really, really particular about thread color. Is I'm going to need to change my threads pretty soon. Strangely enough, when you're free motioning and you're following a pathway, sometimes it is easier, as you can see, to sort of go backwards. So I, I quilted towards me. Now I'm kind of working away from me and it's almost easier to pull that quilt sandwich towards you. Now you can, this, the light's pretty good in here, so you can actually start to see that texture. So maybe, yep. maybe what I'll do here now, there's a nice little bubble right there. Are you, there is a bubble there or you went rogue? No, no, it, it was there, <laughs> it was there. He's just a nice faint one. And then I think I'm gonna just... Oh, I missed that point, oh well. Whatever. It's art, Barb. There. So let's break See, this lovely. off. Let's take this out and hold it up and see what it's going to look like. What? So, you're going to stop right in the middle? <gasps> yes. Oh my God, Barb. <laughs> you rebel. So, raising presser foot, pull this thread, come back here, take one stitch, and on these smaller mach machines, I just use the flywheel, pull up that bobbin thread, and give it a little snip. There we go. Yeah, if you if you pull them to the top and snip them as you go, you don't have to go back in the back yeah. after and find them all. So it doesn't hurt when you're doing something like this to every once in a while step back and have a look and say, all right, where do I want to go now? You can, yeah, oh, we, I like it. Yeah, we yeah. can see pretty good in the shot here. Yeah. You can see you all can the, see texture the texture happening, you guys. Yeah. And you can see if there were... Barb just went up and did the leaf. She stopped playing with the bubbles and mm -hmm. went up in the leaf. Mm -hmm. So if you've never free motion quilted a panel, it's $13, this panel. That's not a lot of money to spend to try it and see. Would you change your bobbin as you go through here? Um, I would choose a bobbin thread that sits halfway between whatever fabric I have on the back and whatever threads I'm going to be using on the front. Now in a panel like this, you can see my little uh, my little palette here. A lot of the aquas, but I've got a dark brown in here well, there, for some of these, yeah, the, there's some these darker areas, areas here. If you've got your tension properly balanced on your machine and you're quilting a wall hanging, I wouldn't worry too much about that bobbin thread. And I wouldn't change the bobbin thread every time I change the top thread color. If even on big quilts... Yeah, I, I don't change yeah. mine. No, the bobbin thread, choose it to blend with your, with your backing. If you wanted it to hide, the tip is to pick that color yeah. there. Whatever's most neutral in there. 
Um, when in doubt, go dark. If you have two threads, one's lighter and one's darker, go dark. The mm -hmm. dark hides. The, yeah. As you can see, the white jumps off of there in lots of different ways. What kind of thread are you using here on this, <coughs> uh, on this? cotton quilt there, Barb? Um, Isocord polyester. What? Don't you know the quilt police say you have to use <laughs> cotton? I choose my threads, and this goes for every quilt that I quilt, whether it's customer's quilts. I, if it's a customer's quilt, I'll quilt with what they ask for. But most often, it's the isocord. On my own quilts, I use the isocord. And I choose that thread because of how it looks on the fabric. Cotton thread gives a chunkier, solider look. And for me, a lot of the quilting is not about the thread. If I'm quilting, it's about the textures that these shapes create. So I choose threads that blend in and that sort of sink into the fabric um, and match the colors as closely as I can. If you want a thread that's gonna stand out on the surface that you're really gonna see and is, is kind of weighty or or you like more of the old fashioned, almost a hand quilted look, yeah, you can use a cotton thread. I piece with cotton, Yes. but I quilt with polyester. If Barb found the perfect match here in cotton and couldn't find it in poly, what would you use, Barb? For something like this, yeah. You, you could throw the cotton thread in. Mix them up. Mix them up. This is, this is the Wonderfill Poly. Now, I didn't bring any over, but I have some of the, um, or this is the Isocord Poly, but the Wonderfill Polyfast is a shinier poly. Yeah, it seems to like, be. If you like the shine to it. The Wonderfill Poly um, embroidery is, seems to be uh, shinier and slipperier than the Isocord. Yeah, yeah. And then you could you could get in here, if you wanted to add some sparkle, you can use the metallic. Oh, there you go, Barb. It's lovely, Barb. This this one, I think, I might be inclined to use on this. This this one, I think, is too sparkly for my taste. Not for everybody's uh, taste. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe a little too sparkly. And then if but this this has a nice little gleam to it. Again, it depends on what you're going to use this for. Is this just going to be a nice wall hanging? Are you going to go ahead and maybe do some in, more intense thread painting in these shaded areas? Well, I currently today this is what we would consider a practice. This piece, is a practice, a learning piece. What are we doing, Barb? What are we doing? Well, do I, some of them I'm going to do some of these leaves just she because can't the, stand the, it. the thread color. All is, this is talking, like, she just wants yeah, to quilt. I just want to quilt. <laughs> We're kind of up on time, though, Barb. This is when we usually sign off. Oh, well, tomorrow's another day, right? <laughs> Hey everyone, have a great weekend. Um, we'll see you on Monday for sure. Yeah, try a panel. I mean, it's it's not a huge commitment. It's doable in even the teeniest little machine. I'm like Barb, I'd have been over here or bigger. Thanks for coming out, Barb. No problem. We appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you who join us, um, whether it's live or when you have free time, we appreciate it and we appreciate your questions. Anyway, you guys, remember, be kind, be calm, be safe. Take care. Say bye, Barb. Bye.